my friends, God gave me a little bit of intelligence. And over the years, I've tried to use my intelligence to hide from God when I knew I was wrong. But where shall I go, David? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I would lie to God. I've lied to God before. So yes, I have. And if you're honest, you have lied to him also. Yeah. And I'll tell you something else we do. We try to pretend that what we're trying to hide from him isn't an issue. And we pray all around it. And there it is, the big 800-pound gorilla in our prayer. Just waiting for us to notice and mention it. God said, look at this child. You really think you can hide that gorilla were for sin from me. And there's banana peels all over your bedroom. And night after night, can you come with another gorilla prayer? No, no, no. You can't hide anything from God. You can't hide from God. You can't keep an issue from God. Because guess what? God, not only was there while you committed the sin, but God knew you were going to commit it before you were born. Because God knows everything. Hallelujah, somebody. God sees everything at one glance. God sees you born and sees you dying at the same glance. That's the kind of God that he is. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. You see, in God, everything is now. I heard some of you say, what are you talking about? In God, everything is now. There's no time in God. So since there's no time, there's no yesterday in God, there's no today in God, there's no tomorrow in God, everything in God is day. Just a continuous now. And God sees everything at once. So that's why we mustn't try to lie to him, because he's looking at you doing it while you're telling him you didn't. Say amen, God. <laughs> I'm not stealing this, and there's your hand in the jaw. <laughs> I didn't do that with her, and there y'all are together. God looking at you. Yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, see? No, you can't hide things from God, and there's no point in trying. You can't repair a cracked wall with whitewash. No, you've got to, first of all, acknowledge what you've done. That's what you got to do. Yeah. See, the, the, the American pulpit has gotten so weak on sin. Because everybody's okay. You're okay. And I'm okay. We're all okay. Isn't that good news? We're all okay. No, we're not all okay. No, we're sinning a mile a minute and going to hell as fast as we can. There's nothing good in any of us. Unless God put it there. That's the truth. But folks don't like to hear that. Yeah, folk, folk don't give much love offering when you preach like that. But God will give you a love offering though. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. God will put you somewhere where folk love the truth. And they'll take good care of you if that's what you need. Yeah. But the truth is, we ought not ever preach on the basis of how much money we get afterwards. Yeah, Lord. If that's what you're doing, then you weren't called and sit. You just picked up your grip and you went. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Yes. We can't repair the wall with whitewash. You gotta chip at sin. You gotta knock at sin. You gotta realize it is sin first. Yeah. And then you gotta acknowledge that you did it. Stop blaming it on somebody else. Well, he did this to me, and she said that, and I wouldn't have done the other thing. No, you gotta stop all that stupidity, all that lying and garbage. You gotta acknowledge you did it. That's right. And then, yeah. this is the most important thing. Yeah. You gotta be sorry unto God that you did it. Yeah. Because saying to God, well, I'm sorry. You know, the way we apologize, you can't apologize to God the way you apologize to one another. See, I step on Minister uh, uh, Branch's toe, and so I said, well, well, look, I'm sorry. <laughs> and as I walk away, I'm thinking, if you had that size 17 out the way, I wouldn't step on it. <laughs> That's how we apologize to one another, and she wears a 7, so don't, don't, I put that for 10 on it. I put 10 on it for laughter's sake. But that's how we apologize to one another. And you know, I, I, I couldn't have stumbled over you if your big foot wasn't in the way. That's how we look at one another. But you cannot apologize to God that way. You can't say, well, God, I wouldn't have seen if you didn't have all these laws in the way. You can try it if you want to. But I'm here to tell you, that's not going to fly. Amen, amen, amen. When they sit ourselves, that dog won't hunt. <laughs> no, he won't. That dog's not going to hunt. You try that with somebody else, but not with the suffering God. Yes, sir. 
say that. No, no, no. You, because God will tell you, look, all those laws are there to try to get you holy enough to stand in front of me. Yes, my Lord. Amen. So stop being ungrateful for what's saving you from the lake of fire. And that ought to end the conversation right there. To a reasonable person, it would. Here's the last thing, and we're done. Even common people yes. oppress the poor. Lord have mercy. See, see when, when you look at your leadership, mm -hmm. and your leadership is corrupt, yes. and then you come to church where you're supposed to learn right from wrong and how to treat people right and how to love God and serve one another as you serve God. And you come to church, and, and that's wicked too. And there's slush funds and hands in the kitty. And the preacher doing this and that and chasing this and the other and so forth and so on. All that kind of garbage going on. You get to where the whole thing becomes systemic. Yes. Where, where from top to bottom, side to side, and left to right, the whole culture is corrupt. And when that happens, God brings in judgment. Now, what happened just before the flood? Hmm? What happened before the flood? The world got so wicked that everybody's mind was on wickedness continually. You know what, you know what it says? Yeah, yeah. Except for one man. That's right. His name was Noah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God came to him and said, Noah, you have tried your best to live righteous before yeah. me. I'm going to bless you and your whole family. Yeah. See, it wasn't Shem, Ham, and Shapheth, Japheth, rather, that, that, that were the reason why the family got preserved. It was one godly man. Amen. Noah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. When God gets fed up, judgment comes. Yes, and God is looking for a man. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for somebody who will stand up in the midst of all this uncleanness yes. and say, God yes. is a holy God. Yes. Wake up, y'all. Yes. Yes. God is tired of all this filth and corruption and lying in the pulpit and stealing from God's people and corruption in the streets and everywhere you look in the lawlessness everywhere and somebody must stand up for God and say for God I live and for God I'll die and as for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord won't you do that today who's willing to stand up for God or who's going to continue to, to worry about what your neighbor says what your boss says. We got to stand up for God. Yeah. We got to have revival. And I don't mean that old fashioned southern thing where you get together and eat some chicken and have sermon a few nights and go home and be more wicked than before. We need real spiritual revival. Yeah. Where we are on our faces with our knowledge of our wrongdoing. Yeah. Confessing our sin before a holy God. Yeah. And asking in the name of Jesus, with tears running down our faces, yeah. please forgive our sin. Yeah. Please heal the land. Yeah. Because God has said in his word, if my people yeah. who are called by my name yeah. shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways yeah. and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. Yeah. Then will I forgive their sin. Yeah. Then will I heal the land. Yeah. We want the nation healed. Yes. We must turn from our wickedness. Yes. We must ask God yes. to make in us a clean heart Amen. and renew a right spirit within yes. us. We must cast aside all of our idols. We're such an idolatrous nation. My Lord, my Lord. Such an idolatrous nation we are. Yes. Yes. We have so many thousands of idols. Lord, what do you mean, preach? I don't have no idol in my house. Anything in your house that you put ahead of God is your idol. Yes. Yes. It's an idol. If you put it ahead of reading your Bible, it's an idol. Well, I would read the Bible, but it's time for my show. <laughs> What's your show called? Let's all go to hell together. <laughs> Coming on at 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, say, Pastor, that's not what it's called. It's called, uh, but, no, I'm talking about the subtitle. <laughs> what in fine print. Let's all go to hell together. Because if you put that television show ahead of reading your Bible, you're not thinking very clearly. Imagine you standing, just you, all by yourself. And here is God the Father on the throne. Here is His Son, supposed to be your Savior, died for you, willing to save you. Yes. And here you are standing in front of him and hordes of angels 
almost uncountable in their number. And then waiting for judgment also. Billions of souls. There you are in the spotlight. And everybody hears every word you're saying with not a loudspeaker in sight. But every word, every breath, every teardrop, everything they hear, they see. And God says, why wouldn't you read my Bible? My Lord. And you say, well, the real wives of Atlanta was on. <laughs> Oh, and right after that, the New Jersey women, they did their thing. Yes. 